Hello, Victor family. Welcome to the Wednesday Word, a brief encouragement from the scriptures. I want to take a little bit of time and bring you a word from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 25, we see every athlete exercises self control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, and in this section, he is encouraging the Corinthians and letting them know about how, for the sake of the gospel, he gives up his rights. He, he does things that he really doesn't have to, but he does it for the sake of the gospel. He lives his life in such a way so that others may experience blessing, so that the gospel may go forth and everyone might be blessed by it. And what I love is, is that Paul uses the analogy of an athlete, an athlete, someone who, who spends their life training, practicing. We see in this verse, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. And I think that more than pretty much any other time of the year, we recognize athletes and what they are what they do in order to reach the pinnacle of their sport right now we have the olympics that are going on right now and then this upcoming sunday we have the super bowl the championship game for the national football league in both of these cases we have the best of the best athletes men and women at the height of their sports competing against one another to see who is the best now if you know anything about sports, in order to be good, it takes practice. It takes hard work. Now, yes, they have an incredible amount of natural talent and ability. But having just that is not going to get you the goal. It's not going to get you the trophy at the end of the day. What we find is, and what I love to hear, are these stories about the work that it took in order to get to what they wanted to achieve. I think of like Michael Phelps and, and other athletes who, who you look at their day and all the work that they put in in order to reach their goal, how they monitored their sleep, how they woke up early every day and worked out and exercised and trained, how they monitored every single calorie that they in took into their body. Like everything was down to precise details because they knew that every little bit would help them in the end. And so we see that that idea is in this verse. They have self-control in all things. Their whole life is built around this one goal. And that goal is to receive their prize. But what I love is that Paul recognizes that if athletes are willing to have that kind of, dedica that kind of dedication and devotion to their sport, all for a perishable wreath, something that will not last, Yes, it is great when people win the gold medal. And it is amazing when the NFL players receive the Super Bowl trophy. They will be forever remembered as long as we're living as Super Bowl champions and gold medalists. But in the light of eternity, that stuff doesn't matter. And what Paul is doing is making a comparison like if athletes are willing to have that kind of devotion to their sport for something that will not last in the grand scheme of things, we as Christians above all people need to have that level of devotion in how we live our lives. And so I ask you, Victor family, do you have that kind of devotion to how you live your life? Do you have that kind of, have that mindset where everything is under control, where you know everything that you need to do in order to succeed in the Christian life? I'm willing to bet probably not. I know I don't. If there are times where I go throughout my day and I realize, wow, I, I hadn't prayed yet. I, I only took a little bit of time to read my Bible. I, I should have said this to this person about Jesus, but I didn't. We as, as Christians need to have Paul's mindset where his whole life was centered around the gospel and making it known. Known to both Christian and to non-Christian. We should give our lives for the sake of others. We need to have the kind of devotion that athletes have. 
Because while they live and strive for something that will not last, we are living for the sake of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven that will never perish, that will never go away, that remains forever. And so we give our lives and we should give our lives for something that truly matters. And so I want to challenge you this week. Will you strive to gain self-control in your life when it comes to how we live for Christ? Establish those routines where you know daily, I'm going to wake up at this time. I'm going to read my Bible at this time and read for this long. I'm going to have these moments where I can pray. I'm going to look for opportunities when I go out to the grocery store, to the restaurant, or X, Y, and Z to have a gospel conversation with someone. I'm going to live my life as an example for Christ at work. I'm going to raise my family to know God. These are small things that we can do to bring all of our life under God's control. Because when we do, we are running the race for Christ. I love that if we continue, we see that, that Paul says, I don't run aimlessly. I don't run like I don't know what direction I'm going in. But he disciplines himself so that others might be blessed. And I hope that that is our prayer too, that we would live our lives under such control of discipline under God that others are blessed. Will you pray with me, Victor family? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this time that you have given to us. Lord, while we recognize the excellence of athletes, Lord, we celebrate their devotion to their craft. And Lord, I pray that we would follow their example for you, that our devotion to you would take over all of our life, that we would be control, be controlled over everything and give it to you, Lord. And so, Lord, may you receive glory and honor as we live for you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed with your family. Have a good day. Bye.